1 Corinthians chapter 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. You are puffed up. We just read that verses 18 to 21 in chapter 4. You're puffed up. And have not rather mourned. You're excited about what's going on. This is a mourning event. That he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. We read last night's chapter, chapter 4, that God judges. Man has no business judging other men. Here is a circumstances in the church in this chapter 5 that a man is being judged and yet he's not being judged. When we go back to chapter 2 verse 15 about us. But he that is spiritual, that's me, in Christ, judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. What's the judgment involved with this man? It's the sin. Now, I'm not saying forget the fornication, but we are allowed to look at a person and say, your sin, your conduct is not becoming what the Bible says you're to be. So we have the right to say, listen, about this Christmas season, about Easter coming up, we have the right to say, you know, what you're doing is pagan and it's against God. Now in this church, here's a man who's committing fornication and Paul says that away from among you, you need to kick him out of the church. You need to deter him. In America today, if this were to happen, the guy would go two or three blocks, you'll find a church that would accept him in his sin. For I verily, as absent in body, Paul's not there in Corinth. He's heard word. He's writing a letter to him, but present in spirit. You realize you may be distanced from somebody, but if your prayer life is to a fellow Christian, you love them, you pray for them, you honor them. You have a care for them. Though you're absent from them, your spirit is with them. <clears throat> have judged already. Paul, oh, judge not least he be judged. What's the law say? What's the standard say? Even the, even at the in the book of Acts, James and the council got together to free flee from fornication. This is one of the things they wrote about. In my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. To deliver such and one. Now he's not really naming the person that did this. But he is. He's like, you know, anybody who's involved in this sin to deliver such a one. Not that one, but yes, that one. But we're judging people who are under sin unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You say, well, Paul, how cruel are you? You want this Christian to be put in the hands of Satan. What's the worst thing that Satan can do to this guy? Kill him. Really? That's a hard statement. He's already churned after sin. The worst thing that could happen to this guy right now is he dies, goes to heaven, and he does not get more wood, hay, or stone. And he may have lost some gold, silver, or precious stone, but if he continue living, continue to do what he's doing, he's gathering wood, hay, and stubble and ashes. Let's just turn him over to Satan. Satan destroyed Job. What was the end of Job? Glory, honor, praising God. Now, I already read, read in the book, 2 Corinthians, this guy gets right and repents and cheers Paul up. See, the destruction of the flesh, is the sin here is the flesh. 
that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. The judgment seat of Christ. The worse you go away from God, the worse you're going to get ashes and ashes at the great way. I mean, at the judgment seat of Christ. Excuse me. And the more you go away from God as a Christian, the more you lose gold, silver, and precious stones. And that may be one of the reasons, oh, that guy, he's doing so good in the ministry. He just loves the Lord. So why did the Lord take him so quickly, so early in life? Maybe the Lord saw something we didn't see. It says over in Psalms that the death of the saints are a pleasure to God. When we die, we're absent, in, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Your glorying is not good. You see how carnal this church is? And then in chapter 4, we had we had seen them, they're judging Paul. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? You let this little sin in, another sin is going to come in. And then another sin. And then you're going to have American church. I'm um, worldly church. Why is the church in trouble at the end of 2016? Because we allowed candles in. We allowed the message to end at noon. We allowed people to bring worldly people in. We allowed, you know, Santa Claus in. We allowed the eggs in. We allowed the... And now we're just one big mess. And then they want a revival. Purge out there for the old leaven. Get the sin out. Any and all sin. Get it out. Get it under the blood. That ye may be a new lump. So see, as a Christian, you are involved with sin right now. Purge it. Put it under the blood. 1 John 1, 9. And begin as a new lump. Let God take that clay and flump it down on the, on the wheel. You may not be what he, what he wanted you to be, but you still can be something. You can be that new lump of clay. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we confess our sins. Be a new lump in God. Say, Lord, you know, I messed up. It's a sin. I'm going to have to do some reaping and sowing. But, Lord, if, if you wash me of these sins, and if you do over, see, do over. There is a do over. And help me this time, Lord. Help me get victory over this flesh. As ye are unleavened, get that leaven out. It's never good. For even Christ, our Passover, is, sanct is sanct sacrificed for us. Now he's going to go into the Passover night. He's talking to Christians. And he's going into the Passover night. You as a Christian can take the Passover and celebrate it in your home as Christians and bring it to Jesus Christ. If you were to take that Passover and show the Messiah and show the Savior to your family and to your children, it would work perfectly 100% rather than having Easter or Christmas, which you couldn't show God at all. Paul's going back to the Passover. Now, don't bring yourself under the law. Don't go out putting blood on your, on your, on your doorpost. Don't do that. But show where in that Passover night and what had happened, show what Christ has done. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Oh. Look at that. Let us keep the feast. What? The Passover. Not with old leaven. Get it out.
Levin pictures the false doctrine. It pictures sin. It just does not belong in dough. It's something you have to add. Not natural. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, just be the dough. The flour and the water. None of the garbage, none of the sin, none of the wickedness. Be that. That's what they carried out of Egypt the night that the, uh, the, the firstborn were killed in Egypt. And that's what God told them to do. I wrote unto you an epistle. Also, there are three Corinthians. This one's called the first Corinthians. We got second Corinthians. He didn't write second Corinthians before he wrote first Corinthians. So there had to have been a first Corinthians, then this would be second Corinthians, then third Corinthians, as far as this is saying. But the Holy Spirit did not want us to know this epistle. I have wrote unto you in an epistle. Not to, not to keep company with fornicators. A division. There are divisions in your life. Now, whether Paul knew about this guy, what was going on, or if he wrote the church, say, listen, this is your conduct. Remember I told you this? Remember I wrote you about it? Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world and with covetous, that's wanting something, extortioners, it's demanding money, getting something by force, or idolaters. I want to meet Christians sat at tables yesterday in honor of Mary's Mass with a bunch of Roman Catholics that are idolaters and had a good old fellowship done. Where the Bible says, no. You say what you want, but you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. As Paul said, don't you keep company with them. You, you think what you want to think. I'll tell you what God said. On a Roman Catholic holiday with people who have other ideologies, with Jehovah Witnesses who don't even believe that Jesus is God, atheists who have nothing to do with God at all, people don't, and you sat at the same table with them, and you broke bread. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. Covetous or idolaters or railers or a drunkard or an ex extortioner with such and one know not to eat. This is a feast. He says, let us keep this feast. 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's get all that leaven. Let's get all that junk out. Let's get those that are saved and love the Lord and doing something for the Lord and trying and praying and, and giving and giving it all to God. Let's us get together. And leaven has come into the church. There are churches today where the world are invited to come. Some churches will even have them as members. Some churches will allow them to do certain offices. That will not be so. For what have I to do? For what have I to do to judge them? Also, that without. All right, these are the people without the church. These are not Christians. I have no business judging them outside the church. They're not gods. They're not the brethren. They have nothing to do with me. They have nothing to do with God. Those are outside the church. Problem is, they're inside the church today. But do not ye judge them that are within. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, we just read. Doesn't God judge? Chapter 4. And the ones that are within, those are the Christians. Ought we not be looking at their lives and say that they're not living to the full potential of what God wants us to do and for the love of God and for rewards and to please God? Shouldn't we not look at them and say, what you're doing, what you're doing? But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who has the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We know what Christ wants. We know what God expects. 
but all oh, other things get in the way. So the conclusion of judging, when you're looking at somebody, we judge the things they're doing. We judge other Christians by the things they're doing to help them, to guide them, to make them clean, to make them that new lump that God can fulfill in their life whatever vessel he has designed them to be. Do ye judge that are within, but then that are without, God judges. Those unsaved people, God will handle them. Great white throne judgment. You just preach the word to them. That's what the Bible says. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. They don't will get right, God will handle them with the great white throne judgment. Those that get right, you're to grow them. This church is, is still, Paul says in his own words, I have fed you with milk. They need to go from milk to strong meat and their things in order to do that. Say, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to do this. This is how you do it. Take one step. You just don't take a child and just let him try to do it all on his own. That don't work. You got to judge a child if he's going to put his hand on that hot stove. No. Who, who in their right mind to see their child walk into a hot stove? Oh, I'm not going to tell them not to do it because I wouldn't judge them. See, when you get in the grounds of judging, it's it's the things we are judged, not the people. And for the love of God that we keep seeing in 1 John, we do it because we love them and want them to get the most they can get from God. And they're not going to get it if they remain with the leaven. Even Jesus spoke. Get that leaven out. But them that are without, God judges. Therefore, put away from among you yourselves. Now he's talking about that person, that wicked person. The church. And close off the chapter. After chapter 4, you know, God judges. God will judge the, the unrighteous, unholy people. But this frame of action has just been reported in my ears in this church. You judge that action by getting rid of that man. You de church him. And so the other church will get, uh, the other people in the churches, and the other church will get the idea hey, we ought not do that. It's wrong, it's lacking. Try to make a note here from yesterday and uh, first Corinthians 5 verse 11 when we read through this list it says a man that is called a brother be a fornicator be extortioner be covetous and a drunkard we're even told to be away from Christians who don't do right along with the world who don't do right so there are divisions amongst the church. There is church discipline. And when somebody is disciplined from a church, they are not to have part of your fellowship until they get right. Need to get that down. I wanted to make that mark if I can at this video.